Watch the band through the bunch of dancers. Quickly follow the unknown with something more familiar. Quickly something follow courage. My word, I didn't, I didn't come. It didn't matter. <laughs> That's supposed to be the tragically hip courage. No, oh, that works, man. That I was totally trying to. Yeah. I, was, I was trying to. At least did it. <laughs> that was, that See, it the, wasn't that painful. That, that had to be the hardest part of this whole. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> not. That's the, that best, the best part. part. That's was, the I, best I, part. I should have went with the twinkle, twinkle. That was Ian from Gale Force Masonry. We've got uh, uh, Carlito. Many. We've got a very interesting show today. So uh, we're going to talk about what are we going to talk about? You we're going to talk about masonry. Yeah, well, yeah. I, Old I, school, I, new school. I would rather talk about historical buildings. Historical it's, it's, buildings. I think that's brilliant. Let's, but historical let's talk. masonry buildings is my my jam. But I am excited to talk about fireplaces. Yeah. Hey, we got hey. wood burning fireplaces. Oh, we got he not knows, gas. Ian knows a lot about oh, that. Okay. He knows a lot I, about I that. It. You keep the gas on that, that side of the table. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> Anybody. <laughs> looking for a stone mantle i still have one in my backyard oh really yeah <laughs> all right we'll get to it so right off the bat i want to talk about so on instagram it's uh at gale force masonry That's the right. website is triple w gale force masonry.com correct yep an email gale force masonry uh at gmail.com is you'll get me perfect you want to give up a number it's up to you four seven two seven zero four eight seven fours I think first off, Carlito, we got to start with history with Manny. <laughs> <laughs> we have a massive budget here, Ian. A I massive love budget. You know what, though? I won't lie. I like this budget. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought since, uh, since a little bit of masonry and since it's historic, I actually wanted to talk about how far back do bricks go? Oh. Ooh. When was the very first brick ever used and in what country? Wow, you want to and it was Egypt, North America. You're no. close. Yeah, it's- uh, it was in North America. So what? Uh, what year are we talking about? What century, more like it? Twelve <laughs> hundred. Seven thousand BC. Oh 7, 000, my yeah. God! I'm only offering seven thousand BC. <laughs> That's amazing. In Turkey. In oh, Turkey. Right? Turkey. How right. they Where started this come from? Jericho in the city of Jericho. They started first discovering bricks made out of mud because clay. bricks were always made in a, a warmer temperature, a warmer climate. Yeah. Straw, so clay. That's why, right? Leave, so leave them out in the sun to bake. And, yep. Uh, Perfect. And go. then wow. I'm just curious. I'm just curious, Ian. How many different bonds? Can you actually name off the top of your head? Well, Brick pattern bonds. Common, I've got I've common, got sixteen or no, twelve of them here. Oh, wow! Oh, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> okay, well, there's common bond, yes. English bond, Flemish bond, yes, Rolock bond. Rolock bond. What's that? Uh, well, Rolock bond is where you turn them on. So instead of a header, which would be just seeing the end of the brick, you turn it ninety degrees. Got it. Okay. Goes on the top of a wall. Got wow. it. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with you already. I'm not joking. Well, that, that's where keep it, going. That's where it stops. <laughs> <laughs> so there's stack, of course. Yeah, stack bond. Stack. There's double English cross. Mm. Now you okay. Wait, 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 what I is that? That's like Do you know gar- that? That's something you see in a garden wall. Yeah. Somebody's garden. So building. double is English that stone. Stack. So so double English stack is basically a double reversed, while there's a double common. That's how okay. it works. Okay, I've seen that. That so, first. Yeah, so you've got the short end of the brick, yeah. and then there's two, two, two courses of that, and then there's two courses of the regular bond on top of that. And then you keep on doing that. That becomes a double English cross. You mentioned the Flemish. There's the English bond. There's the English cross bond. Stretcher, I think you mentioned. Yeah, well, just stretcher. Yeah, well, that's more of like a veneer. You're going to see that new construction. Every oh, yeah. day. Monk is the one that I'm interested about. Uh, I've never even heard of a monk bond. Get, where did you get this? I just did a search, this man. Is, yeah, this is not. I just uh, did. A, and then, of course, <laughs> then there's a, then there's herringbone. Yeah. And then, of course, one of my favorite, actually, I like herringbone. There's a uh, common, which is the one that you the mentioned as well, bond, right? Yeah. So the common is that we're all most known. Popular in Toronto, yeah. yeah. So that was history with Manny. <laughs> now, now, now that we and talked, by the way, that was amazing. <laughs> I, that was probably the hardest one yet. Oh, I know. And now, you knew a little bit about. Well, it. because that's the thing is, I'm actually not a bricklayer. I'm not a brick guy. I'm actually a stone. I'm through stone. And th- through and through stone guy. But the stone patterns, they or the brick patterns, all came from stone. Well, they didn't. Yeah, kind of. The brick patterns came from stone. Yeah. We're just gonna make up history on this show. That's all <laughs> we're gonna do. <laughs> but that we like actually give it. Like I had no idea. Seven thousand years ago, they started mm-hmm. using bricks. They came up with the idea to Man, make a brick. I thought it was mm-hmm. Egypt. I swear. Well, Turkey, pretty close, right? Yeah. So, I mean, but Persians I, I for then. sure thought it was gonna be Egypt. something like. What about a, Roman? Like, they were too busy figuring out plumbing. 
<laughs> they came up with the first toilets, right? Yeah, yeah but hold I, on. I but think hold, they were using hay. When they were plumbing, they were using bricks, right? Aqueducts, they were using slabs of stone. Aqueducts. And, Aqueducts, exactly. Yeah. We've all seen that bench that, I guess, the whole row, the guy at the last end is the one that gets oh, all the shit, literally. Yeah, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right, so that was history, but let's get right into it. So, Ian, tell us a lot about you, oh, how you got started, wow. how you fell into the whole yeah. historical side of things. Uh, I guess it's uh, basically a, a love of old buildings got me to where I am. Uh, How long are we talking now? Uh, I went to school. Well, actually, uh, I went. I did a year. I worked as a laborer for about a year before going to up to Algonquin College to take their heritage masonry program. It's actually in pause right now because there's not enough enrollment. That's so, sad. So that's something that needs to so be So it fixed. is true that we keep on hearing that the masonry stone trade is the most dying trade. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, it's definitely the most in need. It's the, you know, if you're looking for workers, you got to almost go outside the country. You know, there's lots really, of guys yeah. coming to Canada just to fill that. You know, lots of Irish. Before the Irish was the Polish. Polish, really, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. When I first started at the big uh, masonry company, yeah, I worked out there for about 15 years or so. It was all, it's all the older guys. Are, Are you Polish? Polish? No, no. <laughs> I might as well be now. That, uh, my after, dog after, after taking that much, uh, learning that much Polish in um, the... Uh, that, that much profanity in yeah, Polish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Koopa dupa. Yeah. Kul, kul, it's actually kulava. Kul, no, no, I, no, I learned kul, kupa dupa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't want to translate that. I don't, you want, don't want it to, to be translated. <laughs> yeah. I'm still uh, wondering what it means. <laughs> All right, so that's way that Polish that's, and the Irish. Yeah, yeah so yeah. a lot of Canadians, a lot of guys uh, here. Yeah, not so much. Like, there was a bunch of us that all went to the Algonquin College, and, you know, there's maybe like 20, 30 that go through the program. 14, I think, of us graduated in the end. Throughout the country, we just spread out. The remainder, they're dropping out? Dropping out, just, uh, yeah, not making it through, not interested. Went here, you know, we call, everybody goes through the room, why are you here? Well, my parents insisted I go to a class, and this is the easiest one. And then next thing you know, he's going, Not okay, at all. Guys, guys, not guys, at all the yeah. easiest one. No, yeah, he dropped out real quick. But, uh, yeah, really, really good program at the time, and it's uh, probably potentially to be really good, but... Uh, yeah, that was back in, I think it went through in 2003, 2004. So I came out the summer of, two, it was a condensed two-year diploma program that was condensed to one year. It came out 2005, actually, I do believe. Is that program going to disappear from the school? I don't think so. No, they Not, need it. Well, they just built a huge, you should see the shop. The shop that I went to when I was going through the school was, was uh, you know, it's really small. Pretty, oh, really, Pretty, yeah. really small. But so now, that's two when, decades. I went, when I went back, I went back, I think, three years ago and did a little tour through, it was incredible, the size of the shop and all this. I was blown away with the, all the goodies you guys get to have while we had to, you know, struggle through and borrow stuff and show up with our own and it's properly set, but... It's, it's properly set now. But it was but the, not enough people. The that, students yeah. are not there now. It's yeah. properly set, but the students aren't there. Yeah. Hmm. How long ago was that? That was 2003. Yeah, yeah, that I went, yeah. And I think it ran up until about maybe 2017. Yeah, 2017, I think, hmm. it closed down. Something very, not that long ago, it just closed down. So there there has been a lot of enrollment. That's There's a shame been, that it closed down. There, there was other uh, programs in Canada. There was one up in um, Oshawa. There was one, and that, the one in Oshawa actually turned into the Algonquin College one. Uh, one after the other. One, one, one individual pushing, keep on pushing the trade, and one thing turns into another. Um, so what made you get into well my dad's friend lives up in that area and in between you know i had a weird a very strange growing up I, my mom out on vancouver island and my dad here and going back and forth and where do i fit in and all this you know craziness and you know school, are, you, are you a school, vancouver guy or are you a uh, toronto guy well I like you know, hearing that he's from Vancouver. Depends on the Vancouver. day of week you ask me for, you know? Uh, you know, when the Olympics were going on and everything shut down in Toronto, guess where you found me? Up in, up in Whistler. That's the, yeah. You know, I did. I went up in Whistler. Good I, for I, you. I, I built this. Uh, I helped build a, a guy's, you know, crazy mansion up there. Everything was, in, in Vancouver, everything was still pushing to get going up to the Olympics. And then, so, I, you know, with masonry, with any trade, that's the beautiful thing about trades is that you can go anywhere. 
You're True. so right. Take my tools All away the from world. me. Call me whatever, you know, belittle me or whatever you want to do. And that's okay. I can turn a corner and go another way. And, <laughs> you know, there it is again. Yeah. So um, to answer your question, though, how did I get into it? Uh, so as my dad and his friend said, hey, this, this is here. He knew of other Masons that have gone through the program and uh, hearing their stories that, hey, this is really good. They're taking off. They're in need. They're making great money. You like building with your hands. What do you think? And long story short, it, it worked out really well. Nice. I've, I've been employed ever since. You know, uh, there's always hiccups and layoffs and, and everything, but, you know, able to pick up a phone. Two weekends ago, I got the, a call from the guy in Vancouver and said, hey, you know, he called, he got a hold of me and said, hey, how's it going there? Do you want to come work for me? <laughs> <laughs> you can probably make 150 grand. Are you interested? In a month? Wow. Well, no, 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 no. No, but yeah, he, he was saying it's, he, he's one of the biggest outfits out in, in Vancouver. And he said, there's just so much work. I, we, we can't keep up. Wow. We lose out on work because we just can't keep up. So who's fulfilling the work then? I draw on a company that's able to pull guys from different countries or whatever. Are you saying union? Uh, yeah, they are union outfit, but you, the bigger you get, the the more corners you're able to cut or mm, shady, you know, he asks, he goes, Ian, he, <laughs> Wait, goes, Ian, go what's up? he goes, Ian, what's up with this company? And I go, yeah, we all know. And he goes, but out here, they're able to, I can't keep up with them because if they get a job, they can throw 20 guys at it. Where did these 20 guys yeah, come so from? Yeah, so how does that... Where did they come from? So a little Slim Shady going on there. Yeah, big time. That's his competition. That's like the Canadian guy versus the big, you know, almost a corrupt, uh, you know, type of type of situation. I don't know. I'm not too... I bad. have no idea what you're talking about. We're talking about, about yeah. Montreal here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm saying. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. But you're a union guy, aren't you? I was, yeah. You were. I was. For I how was. many years? It's got to be up there right around like 15... Yeah, 15 years. Good, wow. bad, middle. I'm going to take the middle of the road. Cause really? Because there's great days. You know, I just quit. You know, I just quit. I'm going to say that. <laughs> I don't <laughs> no, know, no, I don't we, know we, if I quit or got fired, but, uh, no, no. you know, we separated ways. And, you know, there's days that even even now, you know, I still text my, still text a few people and say, hey, how's it going? Are you checking in? I still miss you, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, there's things that you miss about it. Yeah, you build great relationships. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Well, we so had a carpenter here, a young guy. He was in and he loved it. He loved it for what he learned from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what he loved about it. Yes. Speed. Yeah. If I was in the union bricklayer, yeah, it's all about, you know, somebody's giving you the time to build up the speed. Mine doing what I do, historical buildings. I built up the knowledge of how it goes about, you know, it's all these different trades. You get exposed to, you know, it's because it's such a big outfit. You get exposed to being everything from the supervisor, labor, all of it. You know, why does this guy think I could do windows? Well, guess what? <laughs> By the end of the job, you did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you're learning all these different things. So, you know, one thing turns so to say if it's a bad, seriously, yeah, there's a whole lot of bad relationships there. But... I learned, bad I, learned, I learned a whole lot and, and I took away from it you know, what I can, the good. And I'm not going to ever look back and say that was a waste of time or I, I regret it. Can I ask, do you still have your pension? Yeah, I do. Yeah, because actually wow. I'm not here. I see that uh, there's a 183 outfit fo floating around here. And, yeah. Uh, so the way that the pensions go, this one. Credits. You know, uh, no, we don't do the credits. We do individuals. Yeah, so I have my RSP is my own. I can put in an extra 5000 if I want or, or whatever, but that's my own. It's not a credit. At the end of it, whatever I've put into it over the years becomes mine again. Well, it's, it's great that it's, you it's, have it, that, though. That is, you know, as I was younger, when I was younger and, every, and as I was going up, uh, that was the gold. Like, I was like, I'm not going to leave this. This is, you know, the creme to the creme. Like, you don't want to get to be a certain age and looking back and not have if anything. Yeah, like regrets at 50 not retiring. <laughs> what age did you wake up at that time? Like, what did you turn the corner all of a sudden and go, wait a minute? Yeah, luckily for me, because of certain parent issues, uh, that I was able to always have the light shine on that subject. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want, you always want to prepare for terrible things that you see coming or that could happen. I knew always in the back of my head, hey, down the road, 
this is going to be this is going to be me yeah what am i going to do about it and so that's why that you know being union working for the big outfit was always my worry that hey i want to have something when you're young and learning and coming up you can't just walk off and say hey i'm going to be a you can good luck to you you walk out and say i'm going to be a gc or or a masonry contractor or carpenter you know you might work out totally fine a lot of guys are doing that a lot of I, i find a lot of the young guys are like that they have that attitude and i don't think anybody actually wants to do the hard work to get to a certain point. I think mm-hmm. they want the instant gratification. Lots of that. Really? Lots. Yeah. It's incredible how people don't just anticipate that it's going to take years of learning this before you can actually just walk off. And, but and it's not so much the years. I, I'd rather tell these kids, just look at the lessons you're going to learn. And then when you get into a situation or you want to get more ambitious later on and have that company and build it and have those 20 guys that can take off into another job site and help somebody else in the business, whatever, you can do that because yeah. you know how to do it because you learned the lessons to do it. Exactly. Instead of you just running in there. Exactly. That was my always my thought is I, I worked with the big outfit. There's lots of times I'm running the job or whatever. And hey, you want to ask, hey, the union says I get the race. Where's my... Two dollars and twenty-five cents. <laughs> you know where is it? How come? You know, and but hey, I always took it that these guys aren't going to pay it. You, if you kick up the dust, they'll just say, okay, then you go behind that guy. That guy will lead it, and you're going to still do the same job. So I always took it as, okay, I'm getting an opportunity here. I'm going to take my raise in knowledge. The knowledge is what's key. Well, no one can ever take that away from you. Exactly. Once that's given to you, it's yours. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now, years down the road, that hey, I can't. I did walk off. I did get in an argument and I did flip the bird and I said, yeah, don't worry. I'm not coming back. And wow, holy smokes. I got, I got really lucky, really lucky, but I'm able to maintain it because of those years. Yeah. You do have to pay your dues. You got to be the coffee boy. That's it. But I think there's more to it than that too. Like other people's safety. I mean, you're responsible for the guys that are on your site for sure, for yourself, for the a contractor you're subbing from or yeah. the homeowner yeah. those are all things that people keep forgetting like you know yeah. manny said they want to climb right to the top but there are consequences along the way just like evolution you have to start at the bottom yeah. and go through all those procedures to mm-hmm. have a successful safe company and, and, right? and then that's why like a union outfit going through a union outfit is good because they'll give you all the training the knowledge i'm a certified member the steps instance. you know i've done all the safety courses the only thing i'm not is a, is a safety officer you know do i want it no i don't want to you be don't want that response I don't, yeah no. i don't, don't want to be a safety like officer of any company you know to be a certified member and to go through and, and do all those different steps yeah it, it's important for future not necessarily do i want to walk around and tell you hey where's your hard hat where's your glasses where's your you know where's the the mid rail on the scaffold you know yeah yeah you have to do it you have to know it but you have to know when to implement it as well i wonder is that on a job site at any given time is that the one phrase that's expressed the most where's your hard hat oh no no what would it be uh on union sites they're always don't, wearing it. Don't even think about not wearing your helmet. You might as well just go home. They're always wearing it, right? Yeah, you're wearing your gloves. You're wearing your glasses. You're wearing your boots. You okay, know, how you... about custom rentals? Or... He works on better union sites than I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, on custom sites, uh, I mean, you get safety boots. A guy will bring a helmet. but I don't see many guys wearing them at all. See, that's funny because where I am now, me and my guy, we both wear the vest. We wear the hat. We, we play the part. We, we fit, you know, we're in a, in a very nice neighborhood. Anybody looks over, sees that, you know, our, we have tow boards, mid rail, top rail, like, you know, just tow boards alone in a residential wow. is, is something, right? Like, if, you just take a look around. It's, uh, so if you play the part, you're mostly left alone because anybody that walks in Great is already going to see that you're already hitting these just from the ground. My, my first aid box, my fire extinguisher, my eyewash station. No, it's not where we have lunch. That's 200 feet away. It's up on the scaffold, tied down, you know. But that would tell me a lot about your company and you. It Mm -hmm. would say that you're responsible, you're mature, and you follow the rules. You don't break them. And I would rather have someone responsible on my project than someone not. Well, that's what I expect to the client because they're, okay, this project has to go a little bit quicker and this and that. But I just, hold on. It's all in the prep. If we don't do the proper prep by putting on 
tow boards and all this other, you know, with our scaffolding and everything else, then we might end up going back 10 steps. And, and then you're really going to be angry at me that I'm not speeding but, up. But, you know, I'm looking at your fingers and I don't see any bruises. I don't see any blood clots. <laughs> <laughs> so no. are you on the tools? Hold on, hold on. You didn't get to see this. We're, you know, this oh, is... Oh, there's the nice ones. Yeah. So, that's, so that one right there that I'm showing the guys is my cut to my forearm where I didn't have a guard and I didn't have a handle on on your grinder. grinder on the grinder uh -oh. No. Uh -oh. Oh, I'm, that, I'm that guy and i was cutting um it was actually in a crypt in saint michael's cathedral when we first started that job a crypt really, yeah it was in a crypt it was the first wow. crypt it was the first crypt Spooky. opened up <laughs> and uh opened it up and there had there was a whole family inside and uh <laughs> huh yeah, well, or, yeah well, what? All, all in their caskets and everything <laughs> why yeah. did the lights go out all of a yeah, sudden what's yeah. going on here <laughs> But uh, it was it was interesting. You know, I didn't this like I didn't, I didn't like that. You know, like we're taking apart the first crypt, we're taking it apart, and I have a serious like another two centimeters the one way, and I wouldn't have been able to use my hand. Oh again. my wow. god! What a coincidence yeah. and, is that? And also that it's right across the street from St. Michael's Hospital. It's, you should have seen these guys an, march it, me into uh, you know. Wow. Yeah. Lucky, lucky. Hey, and I tell the nurse, yeah, I cut myself. She brings a band aid. <laughs> no, I cut myself. <laughs> Get me the gauze. She, she comes back. She goes, yeah, I, uh, let's see. And I go, okay. And by the time I took my hand off, grabbed the gauze, put it back on my hand, my boots are covered in blood. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it bled for actually 17 days. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, so yeah. you hit it. So, so no I, guard, and the blade broke right off. It pinched. So what I was cutting was a solid piece of steel, probably whatever is. 100 years old piece of solid steel it actually shifted pinched the blade the grinder flipped around to the 360 the blade broke as it was pinched and the the now three pieces of the blade came down and scratched my well cut my holy arm but yes. you're right it did scratch it that's just a a yeah. graze right oh well i went to back to work an hour later so i don't know yeah it's a little, oh you're you know, a champ well, <laughs> a little bit of duct tape and away we go but lucky lucky though right at that point yeah you learn you learn these lessons and now you know, those are the things you learn. And, but thank, thankfully that I learned it because now the people that I work with me don't get away with these. So we all We've share, all we all it, share in our, our safety and, yeah. and what we learn. And, um, Hey, sometimes things, things happen and we learn from it. I was going to say that it's interesting that you've got clients, you work on historical projects and the clients are always having conversations with you about making things faster. <laughs> working things faster mm. it's historical in historical yeah, yeah <laughs> like you yeah. should baby your time no no well, yeah there's well there's always a certain amount of pressure on getting things done and, and in certain you know different circumstances i'm in a circumstance where yeah it's not ideal situation not ideal timing put it that way no, it's not ideal timing okay and if you could hurry it up Luckily, I'm also doing, there's a handrail involved in what I'm doing. So I, I told him, I said, I can hurry up as fast as I want. Took the handrail. The handrail came down, I think, in like within four days, five days of starting the job. Okay, now we're going to wait a month for the handrail to come back. So... So you're, you're, re, you're reusing that exact same handrail, yeah, it's so getting, it's, it's going to get stripped. It's actually, yeah, it's, taking, it's up in Brampton right now. It's getting acid dipped, and it's going to get uh, galvanized if, if, if it possibly can. And, uh, like, if everything goes well, it's going to get galvanized and repainted, and, yeah, it's going to go back in the same, same. But uh, Was it galvanized before? No. It was black? It, it was actually held together by paint. Whoa. Wow. You know, oh, like, well, this is a century. This is... Yeah, this is original. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. Is, uh, I think we're, we're dating... We're not 100% on the date. It's a bit hard to get to the building date, but we're, we're putting it in around like uh, maybe a little bit before 1920s. So. Wow, cool. So, Very cool. Yeah, it's original. Yeah, this is a, one of many handrails. There's, this is the first one going So you want to take your time. It document. It, and that's what I said too, is that, you know, it's all about seven Ps. What are those? Prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> Wow. I've heard this before. I know. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah I can't believe you remembered yeah. that. Yeah. Well, slow it down. Slow it down to speed it up, right? You need to slow it down to document it and, and to properly before you, you know, everybody wants to crack into stuff and tear it up, especially in restoration, eh? Oh, this is garbage. Let's, okay, rip and rip and tear it and throw one in. And then next thing you know, you go to put it back together and, oh, who took, who took the template? <laughs> where's the template? Hey, where's the recipe for that? You know, I have recipes. I'm not kidding you. 
four years old, five years old for Sir and So's house. I'm still hoping that I, you know, I'm still trying to reach out and it's an architect and trying to reach out and, you know, hey, can I finish your house? Because it's 90%, 80% finished. I still have the recipe. Can we, can I finish it? So what do you, you're building a table of contents. You're like, you're basically putting a grocery list together of what well, yeah. was done, what needs to be done. For the recipe, uh, what I'm referring to is, for instance, like the mortar recipe. Okay. To, to match it. To cr- like you you've already it. figured oh, that nice. out yeah. the color even where texture. the house i'm at now okay yeah we took th- well we maybe took a, i'll call it a week i took a week not just but you know within that week is the time that it took me to figure out the recipe it takes a time to dry and everything else and we can do other things but you know okay let's make up 10 different samples figure it out okay those two samples are very close but we're going to add in different aspects or whatever it may be right like different houses call for different things and it can sometimes, it's even, you know, what you have on hand that, hey, you know what, that mortar mixed with that pigment and boom, that ends up being what we use there. You know, if we ever come back, that's what we want to use. And you're going old school, right? So you're not using, you use a line base, right? Yeah, line base. Depends on what the Dep- home, yeah, the where brick, we are. Yeah, the stone. Yeah, well, it really comes down for right now. It's definitely the brick is a, is a big factor, whether or not it can withstand but also it, what it's compatible with. It has to be compatible with what's there. So that's the thing about restoration is like, there's so many elements you have to understand. I've always thought this, that Toronto is notorious for tearing down instead of restoring. Oh, You're totally cool. right. Look at the core. Toronto <sighs> core had beautiful I, like, architecture. I, 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 I love glass and I love metal and I get, I get all that stuff, but I do love history. I do, like we had some really nice buildings yeah. and at any given time, go through Instagram and you can see a lot of, Images from New York and Boston and Chicago and well Philadelphia, there, New York. and you'll see it from a hundred years yeah. ago, and you'll see the yeah. exact same building there yeah. today. So you can still th- you can still see it today. Is like two two main buildings that come up to my mind right away. Which is Old City Hall. Yeah, they were going to tear beautiful, that. beautiful. They, I know, I remember that. They were going to tear that down to put the highway in. <sighs> Second one, much music. No. Oh no, no, uh, much, no. <laughs> much music has a, a year. It's got uh, some sick architecture. Uh, it's there. a yearly. They did it. Well, they did a really nice restoration at the very beginning. But it's yearly uh, maintenance. Maintenance that gets done on that building because really? it's terracotta and because terracotta uh, sh- splinters S- sort of um, sand. fractures. Well, terracotta don't belong in winter. Yeah. <laughs> but the building looks fantastic. <laughs> well, because it, it's great when you paint it, eh? Because the terracotta is looking smashing, but it's paint. Is really? that paint? Yeah. Is that paint really? Yeah. Well, you know, after you doctor it up, sometimes, you know, this one doesn't match that one. Well, how do you do that? How do you make it match? Well, you paint it with, with appropriate things. You know, things. what's really I'm funny not, is I never really and, stood wow. so and hold close. On, hold on. For all the audience out there, don't paint masonry no. buildings. No. Okay? We're not unless advocating. It's, unless it's not, breathable. Well, <laughs> no, but even still, like, oh, don't do it. Yeah, in certain circumstances, painting an actual piece of terracotta. We're not talking about painting the whole side of it. If building. it was angel stone, I'd so be okay. So hang on a sec. What's the second building? Union Station. Oh, my God. And that just finished. That. that just completed a huge restoration. Are you sure it's done? Oh, okay. All right. I'm not part of that whole thing. It's not done. It's not done. I spent five years of my life down on Union Station. I know Union Station because we got into there when it was just cracking into the restoration. So I went down into the basement. You would not believe the crawl spaces in the attic. What's that like down oh, there? It was it, Well, it's gone now, but it was... The it, cult rooms. But you could... Yeah, no, it was actually interesting. You could see where the... Okay, the, the janitor... This was his you know this is his hideout <laughs> yeah yeah you can find out where the you know guys had their hideouts uh the beer bottles the the road ma- i found a road map of my year the, 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 my date of birth i found a road map down there like all kinds of interesting stuff well because everybody's passing through that building but think and, about how many people don't appreciate that that uh, beautiful stone there while they're going to work or going home yeah. no one's paying attention right yeah it's incredible We've okay lost. so in a city our size Mm-hmm. Two very, we should have a hundred. Yeah. Like they so, keep on tearing them down. So the other one that I was part of that actually kicked off my, um, my whole career, the first bricks I ever laid was uh, Goodman Awards. Actually, I went through that. You're um, an IATSE. IATSE yeah, I used to be NABAD. Okay. So, okay, back, so back in the day before they actually made the distillery district the way it is today. Yeah, was actually a distillery. Yeah, we, we were actually, it was real, but it was being used probably for a decade or two for film productions, That's TV right. productions, right. production, yeah. all kinds of productions. So it was my dad's very good friend from high school that was the, one of the main superintendents of that job. And I was actually working at Absolute. 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I worked at Absolute for a, a short time, and you know that's not. Uh, Absolute's a film location. Yeah, it's a, uh, oh, supply. I thought we were talking about vodka. <laughs> <Yeah>. No, <laughs> it's a better. There's another story there. But, uh, yeah, no, I worked there, and that wasn't fit, anyways. So the guy said, "Hey, why don't you come? You know, we're doing this thing. It's right close to your house. Let's go." And and so that kicked off, and that was that was. I got some stories about that place. Let me tell you. It's a beautiful. When we were shooting there, it was a bit of a shit show, and we were nervous about where we were going and where we were setting up lights because mm -hmm. we were looking at these structures and these structure points. And we're like going, are you sure we can mount something there? Yeah. Well, it's too bad. They've kind of, you know, they changed it a lot now. Yeah. I mean, it's not what it was. You know, the the, the, the whiskey rack, what, with the rack house, I think they called yeah. it. Yeah. That thing's all gone. They took out quite a bit and it kind of, that's that's what I don't like about yeah. Toronto. Yeah. At the same time, they took the wood that came out of the rack house and they put it into uh, one of the restaurants down there. All the tables yeah. are actually all the... Yeah. So it, was, it was quite interesting being down there. The Mill Street Brewery. Yeah. Well, we basically kicked that thing off. We were, you know, you're, this is back in the day. You know, your safety meeting? Yeah, the keg. <laughs> <laughs> Where does the keg go? Well, did I tell you I lived right up the street from the place? So, you know, we'd, we'd throw that thing in the cab on Thursday night and go up to, go up to my place. And, yeah, that was way back before this is... Uh, quite different nowadays you wouldn't you wouldn't yeah. get away with even a but there aren't outside, i guess but. in toronto i guess i can think of casa Loma. it's got its story and and we i've actually been in there on some of the behind the scenes that's I've, a good point i've been up on the yeah. tower itself we've worked on the tower I, yeah I, I have spent some time up working up on the tower it's always interesting where you get to, you know the the company i did work for they've worked there for 10 or plus years you know they've been you know the foreman that ran that site i'm sure he knows every stone inside and out um, so yeah, lots of work. Like, and that's the thing is that I really like that you know I've I've named I've I've been able to work on all these different key historical historical buildings. Yeah. What's the name of like? Are, are we fair to say that these Toronto homes are you know like our version of brownstones? Are they labeled? You know the ones that I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, down the, in New York. The, yeah. the, the semi-detached, the very tall, very narrow yeah, with a peak yeah. on it. Yeah. Are those are Victorian or like what are they? What do we call those homes? The old Victorian style. The old down, Victorian yeah, style in, with in like the, the deep, annex. Yeah, yeah, the annex yeah, kind of style, that yeah. kind of stuff. I mean, those are beautiful homes. Those are our brownstone, so to speak, right? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah and definitely. Yeah, there's little pockets in the city that have different characters to them. But yeah, that's those are ones that, you know, UFT should almost almost be shamed because they own so many buildings in the annex that they don't restore. They or just, they made too well, modern. They, hang if they on, have. We, we we don't get into the frat houses off of well, George. Well, that's what I'm talking. And, yeah, and Prince yeah, Arthur. that's what I'm talking about. These old historical, they're they're <sighs> key parts of our his, our history, and they're just being overrun by these. You know, hey, I know they have to go somewhere. And of everything. course, you know, that's I all know. fair, and they want to have a good time. But hey, the building. Let's get to the building. You Maybe they should do something. a rule where, like, every party that you have, the whole group gets to renovate something. I would hate to see how that turns out. No, no, no. Sober. <laughs> sober. Yeah. They have to renovate sober after yeah. they have the party. But Because yeah. I've been in those buildings, man. Mm -hmm. And I look at the bones of those buildings and I'm like, oh, why can't somebody just... Yeah. But it would cost a lot of money. Well, that's the thing. Is that why you love New York so much? I'm huge. Yeah. New York, Chicago, Boston, Philadelphia. I love all those cities, man. I'm not a huge West Coast guy. Like, you can't tell me. I mean, so what buildings in... In, in the west side i don't like i don't know like in here there's so many buildings on the east coast side of things even i haven't been to washington yet but i could just imagine what it's like all those buildings right yeah, yeah. they restore and restore and restore toronto no man here's yeah. a stamp tear it yeah. down yeah. get rid of it so the guy i deal with with the building that i'm working on right now i made a comment about uh, a building across the street and hey that's a beautiful lovely historical home and it looks like they're getting ready to knock it down and that's a crying shame and he goes what do you mean historical building? And I go, well, that's got to be at least, you know, the 40s or something. Like, there's there's character in that building. Like, you know, yeah, he, never. Starts, he starts laughing. I go, what? I go, the house I grew up in was 800 years old. What? <laughs> I said, wow. wow. Like, you, okay. What part of Europe? Yeah, he's uh, from London. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, so that's a whole other world, yeah. right? Yeah. Whole yeah, other yeah, world, yeah, man. Yeah. Castles. Yeah. Yeah. And we, you know, in historical, they still kind of model after what's in London. If you come from London, you're like a god. It's interesting. I, I would love to have a conversation with a person that knows lead-coated copper. Uh, I've heard a, a few different things. And how is it in this climate? Is it the best in this climate? I'm going to say no. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. It, it's, it's great for damp climates. That's it. But yeah. we, we're, we're not a damp climate country. Well, are you saying lead? Yeah. I, I assumed lead was good for any climate. 
Well, I think it... Uh, it's pretty much bulletproof to me. Like lead-coated copper is going to... From what I've understood from people that have worked around, the, you know, the, the lead and the copper move at different rates. The lead, the extremes, right? The winter and the summer extremes don't compat with the, the lead and the copper together. Hmm. It just doesn't shift in the same fashion. There's an issue there, but we have to take a little pause for... Well, we're going to have building code talk with Manny and Carlito. <laughs> <laughs> Manny and Carlito. I'm the one who always does the building code yeah, talk. I had a great idea. Okay. <laughs> you, you'll probably know this. Yeah. I, I'm assuming you'll probably know this. Okay. Veneer ties for masonry. Oh, yes. Yeah, As part of the building code, there's five key uh, details for that tie. Starting off with for any thickness brick that's 70 millimeters or more. They have to be A, B, C, D, E. What are the five things off the top of your head can you think of? The ties? Yeah, the ties themselves. Oh, did I tell you I'm not a bricklayer? But okay. <laughs> um, okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah, but you're, have to be... you're attached to it somehow. I'll give you a hint. Okay, the first one is they Nails. have to be... No, no, no. They have to be corrosive resistant. Yeah, yeah that's great. For yeah. sure. Can't be less than 0.76 millimeters thick. So the brick, I guess the brick is 70 millimeter, which would be seven centimeters. Is that so it doesn't affect the tuck point? No, no, 0.76 millimeters thick, so less Seven. than a millimeter. So they want it. They they're just saying that your your tie has to be so thick, and yeah, then it, it can't be wider. It can't. It has to be um, not less uh, than 22 millimeters wide, and then it has to be shaped to provide a key with the mortar, yeah. and it has to be spaced in accordance to table 9.20. Yeah, which is uh, like 30 and 16 or something like that. I do believe. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, that's correct. So that that's, was brick veneers. That's the important stuff is how far apart you How go. far apart? Because yeah. I guess the jokers will put one, one. every row. On the whole, <laughs> and the whole side you? and then the whole side of the building. <laughs> and they'll probably put it at the corner. But, but in a historical, you tie, you tie physically. I tie by, you know, the common bond, which we talked about before. Yeah, that's what's common, interesting. Okay, and the common bond is stretcher, stretcher, stretcher. So every brick laid out one after the other. And then a header course up every six. A header course ties into the course behind. So it's far superior than what today's veneer goes by. Yeah, because wow. you're tying structure into yeah. structure. Yeah, yeah. Why has that gone down? Well. Money. Yeah, time. Costs. Yeah. You know, and even in, Labor. in, in the annex of the buildings we were talking about before, you'll even find buildings where you don't see a header course and, hey, what's up? And then you, t you start taking it apart and you find hidden headers where they've turned it on a really? 45. So the whole brick doesn't come through on a 90. You don't see the, the header of a brick. It's hidden in behind, in behind two stretchers on a, you know the 45. It's cut into the two bricks. But hang on a sec. You're telling me you're not a bricklayer. Oh, no, but I take things a lot apart. You know, I no, but it's interesting. I was, I was walking. I live in the annex, I, and my house is like 140 years old. I was looking at homes, and I was with a bricklayer, block layer, bricklayer, stonemason, and he was talking about how beautiful the stones were and how they held the windows together and how I never realized it, but when I was listening to him talk, I appreciated it so much more. Yeah. And just listening to you. Just... I have a real problem. It happened today where we got going on a subject, you know, the, the chimney needs addressing. And I found myself like almost, you know, five or more minutes later that, oh, hey, you know what? I'm getting <laughs> caught up in talking about masonry here. I need to, you know, tone it down for, the, you know, for people to understand all the actual issues. Right yeah, they, they were just probably lost. But I, I do want to say two things. First, I want to say thank you to Manny for researching <laughs> all the history and building codes for the show. And a big shout out to Mark from oh, that's Skylux. Right. Mark uh, from Skylux for Skylux having us here. Yeah. yeah, we totally forgot about doing that. We always forget about doing that. But thank you, Mark. I was going to ask you, Ian. So my, I guess my biggest question is that how do you price this? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This is interesting. Yeah, no like the, interesting. your job and yeah. what you do, we need more of you mm -hmm. because we don't. We have too many buildings that need you and your skills. How do you price it? Like I, we could see a house or we could see a structure falling apart, the but best, we don't know how to price it. Yeah, the best you can do is tell them what you see. Everything that you, like. You know, I'm doing a, a copper, well, I'm not personally doing a copper roof, but it's a part of what I'm tackling right now. And we just ripped off the copper today, actually, and you get down underneath of it. And it was something that even the copper guy wasn't anticipating. What was so, it? Well, it's just a pan. The way they built up the pan was, you know, terracotta laid on plywood. The whole pan of the roof has an actual copper pan to it as well. Wow. Uh, just, so yeah, a, a double pan? It was a double pan, yeah. For water. Yeah, but actually, so underneath the, the, the top, the actual roof, 
it was plywood and then the pan, but the plywood was completely saturated, completely. Like just, we, took, we could pull it apart with our fingers. To price things, you have to price in saying, okay, this is what I anticipate. Now, here's a whole other list. Stipulations, of yeah. That, you know, you can get into. Well, based on your experience, you're going to see what you see yeah. when you're there, but then you're going to say, here's a list of things that might be behind what we're not yeah. seeing. And this is what we're going to do if we run into that, like picking up, I'm dealing with a, a porch situation where it's all band stones put together. And, and I, I, I said right away that, hey, more than likely, we're going to have to redo the stonework. What is a band stone? So you have the... the facade of the building and somewhere upon the facade you'll have a stone run across or it could even be oh, like could, a header yeah, well, yeah no? but this projects almost like a uh, a soffit sort of but just a stone oh. right so it's a part of the stone that's a fancy it doesn't even have to be fancy it just has to be a, a literally a, a, a stone band so it could be on a brick house there's a, a few on the, the house i'm working on now different different i want to say layers but it gives a depth yeah, it also holds things, you know, it ties to both widths or whites if you're a masonry. Yeah, a I know. Mason, a masonry. I remember hearing yeah, that for yeah. the first time. I was uh, like, dude, you're saying it wrong. What's yeah, wrong with you, yeah, man? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, bandstones, they do have purposes. They do keep back the static, wa you know, uh, capillary action of the water as well, right? That's another thing that I'm dealing with. But there. don't you find very that pretentious. Like, don't you find that <laughs> fascinating? Like, when you actually break things apart and see how they were built well, that's why 100 years that's ago. That's why I got into doing what I do, honestly. Yeah. Honestly. Bottom line is I love seeing how they did it back then. You know, I worked for a company up in Ottawa where we worked in um, uh, Elmont. It was Elmont City Hall. Town Hall, I guess. Found an 1832 half penny. Nice. I found, I found a, a, a complete ink well. Complete. I found wow. a beer bottle, like, and it's like the the blue, like the blue glass beer bottle. So you know that's old, old. Wow. At, at what one one spit on a circle that used to be. It's part of the UFT. Just a building redone there. It used to be uh, among other things was uh, that's where they made penicillin for the war, so, and it was really interesting. So I redid the stairs going into east side of the building, and when I redid it, you know, you just you just gotta scrape away the dirt to get down to this. They don't want to put in the friggin' new foundation for this thing, but. Got to clear out of some dirt, and sure enough, two inches underneath the first layer of earth was a penicillin bottle. You kept it, right? Fully intact. Really? You know, and you're just thinking, you know, I know it's only like a two-inch thing. That's history right yeah, there. Yeah, of course. And it's been sitting there in this little corner, two inches below the ground, for 60, 70 years. You think it was a doctor or a nurse or somebody that just had it and just... It probably tripped going up the stairs. <laughs> I should have redone the stairs back then. <laughs> yeah. Tell me you found a safe with maybe some money. No. Uh, not money, no, no. but we have pulled out a lot of safes. Like at, uh, at Goodman Awards there, we pulled out a lot of safes. That uh, I have some great photos of guys standing, standing beside the safes. and I'm sure I've cracked open uh, one or two safes throughout my time, guaranteed. What I'm really interested in, we haven't talked about it, what is the city's requirements for you building or restoring these homes? Well, it depends on what you get into, right? Like currently I'm just dealing with tuck pointing and, you know, the railing and, you know, it's pulling in different guys. So I don't have to deal with too much of the city. But it's heritage. Yeah. Well, it depends on if it's a historical designated. There's two different classes. As soon as you get into yeah. designated, then you're into a can. So of what's the difference? Somebody's done paperwork. It's true. That's it. Okay. Bottom line. Or Don't, someone's complained. Or if it is even historical, well, maybe they hurried up and knocked it down. One blur comes to hand. You don't mind, right? One blur. What was that? Stoli's? You know, you remember the suit shop? Wasn't that a historical or trying to get historical designation, but they, they sped it up and knocked it down on a weekend? Wow. I yeah. don't remember that, really. Yeah, yeah, check it out. Yeah. Now it's the biggest condo going up in, in Toronto. Well, right? it became the biggest ugly looking condo at that corner no but i'm talking east i'm talking west side it's not done yet oh the other one behind it there that's the one that it was in the it was in the paper they didn't have a permit to go above ground level and they were yeah yeah, 10 yeah, yeah, yeah i remember that and all they really cared about <laughs> <was> <laughs> stories <laughs> it's all right <laughs> wow somebody knows somebody eh i think it's a little more than that man don't worry, that was, I'll build that your was, bridge in a that school. Was become, that corner one, that was becoming, what, the most expensive address? Oh, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. In Toronto, yeah. right? Well, that, just... that actually, the whole, if you want to call it, postal code of that location is Canada's most expensive. And actually, a neat fact about that strip is if you go from University East, is all owned by Victoria College, which is part of UFT, and all those shops pay rent to, to UFT. UFT. 
Wow. They lease the land. All that down Bloor? Down Bloor is all owned by UFT. Yeah. Wow. You know, from way, way back. And they, they leased out the land and all these, all these buildings went up. Yeah, the most expensive land in probably Canada. Old money, eh? Old, I think that's things, a different podcast. Yeah, things you learn. <laughs> things you learn hanging out at these, uh, these old buildings. Do you ever have to apply for permits at all? I haven't run into that yet. I'm, I'm a really, really fortunate. Haven't run into it. Yeah, but technically haven't speaking, to. it's not a permit Situation. situation no i'm not i haven't found myself i keep on researching i keep on doing all yeah. the due diligence because i have to run it through certain individuals that hey you know you're looking after all these properties and here's my due diligence and i'm checking it all out and i'm not looking to cut corners or, or hide or i'll do it whatever you know if you want me to do the job because you like my work and everything else then that's cool but just hey, I need to take care of this because I don't want to get into a situation where I don't want to have a guy come and knock on my door. I yeah. want him to come and look at my scaffold and go, "Hey, dude, you you ever thought about being a scaffold guy?" <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. That's your safety. That's holding all your material. I, and then you're like, living. You're living on there. A lot of people don't realize that you don't just do a project for a week or a month. You're on projects for years, right? Yeah, I, yeah. It can That's be, a yeah. real mason. It's like building a, a real door. It takes 20 years for a real door to get yeah, built. You're yeah. building homes Union, for years. Union Station, not that it was part of Gale Forest Masonry. So I was just uh, in younger days. Uh, but I spent five years there. At Union? Yeah, yeah. And there's still going on. Yeah, it's and still, it still will go yeah. on. And it's still, any, it's still a maze that people get lost in. Still to this day. <laughs> it's actually interesting working down there. You become like the information desk. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, Where can yeah, I find? That way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's got to build that into the job cost, right? It's yeah. Direction. Have you ever had to deal with the historical society? No, but I, well, no, but I know the loops I've done. I've, you know, like I was talking about with working with a big company is you learn the knowledge, right? So yeah. I do know. The game, who, yeah. I, And I have, you know, even with... This is a little bit of a secret I'm going to let drop right now. That you know, because oh, because uh, well, not really secret, but you know, when you get asked to build, to hey, can you do us a building report and let us know your findings? Okay, cool. And you know, okay, now this is getting further down the road. That I went and took it to a historical architect and said, okay, here's my here's my building report. What do you think of it? Will you sit down with me, have a look at what I'm up to here? Because you know, I am new and I would like somebody's advice. I'm not talking, you know. Joe Smollett just came out of school. No, I took it to one of the, you know, luckily he, it was a guy I could reach out to and he, for whatever reason, answered my email and okay, I'll sit down with you. And we went through it and he says, keep trucking. You're doing good. Like I can help you, but I don't see anything I can help you with because that's the way it's done. That's literally what he said. Very cool. And he said, you know, come back if you have a harder problem. Like I would love to help you, he said. Currently, I don't know exactly how to help you because everything looks fine to me. And okay. that's just based on your on-site report of what you've seen, your I've, fighting. I did a report of the whole building. and uh, What are you looking for at this point? I mean, Ian, what are you look? You're just paying attention to... For instance, I, I pegged this copper roof and the railings and everything else. I, I pegged that in the very first, that, hey, you know, your railings, your roof, the way it's made up, it's, it's not correct. You can see by the stone that it's leaking. Uh, the way that the water comes down the stone... You can also, there's a story to be told there that, you know, because of the stain, that tells me that, okay, this it's isn't true. running right. The wear and tear. It's, you true, know, yeah. it, it, the more you get to know a building, you got to know it in historical buildings, stone, different for carpenters, I don't know. The carbon. But, but no, but it, it like, you got to see it in spring, you got to see it in summer, you got to see it in fall, you got to see it in winter. And issues that you see, there'll be stories that are told to you throughout those times. You know, and you get to know more and more that, hey, okay, you know, I did know this was a steel skeleton building, but okay, now all the brick is just a veneer. They're not even full bricks. When you say a steel skeleton structure, what do you mean by that? So it's kind of modern, like what they would do now modern, where they put up, you know, the four, four posts of steel. Metal posts. erection, yeah. Yeah, and then fill it in. You know, back in the day, they did terracotta. They filled it in with terracotta. Wow, that, that, that was way. all terracotta? So what they did back in the day is they built terracotta, and then they tied it in. Okay, we go up whatever it was. They didn't have a code, but we would go up so high, and then you'd tie in a header brick as we were talking about, you know, ties and everything. So you ran, you ran. so okay, the terracotta is actually tied in with a, with a brick. And, and then they would keep on going. But all the bricks in between, this is a Flemish, no, an English bond. So it's, so it's a stretcher course, a header course. So you think, okay, wow, there's all, this, there's all these ties. Well, no, it's actually only every four feet they have ties. 
or whatever it may be. So did we get lazy? Like I'm, I'm just assuming oh. because, well, here's the thing. We're talking about from English, Ireland, mm-hmm. you know, the UK basically. That's where a lot of this building know-how came mm-hmm. from. Mm-hmm. Those guys, they came over Poland. to North America. What? Poland. Poland, Croatia, <laughs> whatever, well, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you know, If you want me to make people upset, uh, what I'll say is that I think that the education system might have gotten in the way a little bit trying to here yeah, well, don't, or, don't. Or, or in anywhere oh, okay yeah, yeah because you know engineers came along architects came along we're the kings of the trades and we're going to take all the credit even though that there's you know guys behind the scenes actually like solving the real issues uh, but you know well, but i agree these guys no but <laughs> these guys too. these guys are going to tell us what kind of mortar to use what this what that what that well hey these guys back before they knew all that until you brought in Portland cement. Once you started bringing in Portland cement, the, the engineers and architects started seeing, hey, this is the greatest stuff in the world. We're going this way. Forget all that knowledge. Go like this. And then that dropped off. You know, dad to son didn't get passed down. And so all this, all this, you know, like high, hot lime. What do you know about hot lime? I just learned about it. I'm, I've been doing this. 15 more years what's hot lime so the way that they used to make it like at parliament hill and and even all of toronto they would make lime hot lime is just oh i'm i i'm bad at this because i don't actually know the whole breakdown of it but it's yeah the pieces of it is basically lime putty and i'm gonna get dms about this for sure (laughs) but but okay they, they they before it's made into the powdered hydrated lime you know it's hot you know it's active lime they throw it in a hole they throw the the sand in it it's actually heated up when the reaction with the water it actually starts to bubble and explode so they would cover it over they would throw it in these pits they would let the they would mix it all together throw it in a pit let it sit for 10 days and then in toronto the brickworks people out of the brickworks would actually take a buggy horse and buggy around to all the different masonry job sites and drop off your mortar and you can see that's this how line. it was done. Yeah, I can show you. I've pulled out, pull, and it actually is hot. Like it's, you know, it's well, what was the reason? So it makes it stronger. Is that, that like when you heat it up, you activate it or something? Well, it is the activation, but it, it's the true. Yeah, it does make it. It's just as hard. It's okay. just as hard. It allows it to mold and bend and you know rejuvenate, re- rejuvenate as the building moves and settles wow. and everything else. Right? Where I've never when, heard when, that when you start word. putting in when you start putting in all these uh, cements. It makes it so rigid that once the building shifts or moves it or anything, cracks, it cracks. cracks. And now, okay, now we got a big, huge problem. Yeah. Where before it would, you know, auto heal. That's amazing. So it's actually healing itself. Yeah. So organically, you can. Like I took apart uh, Broadview. What is it? The Broadview School. What is that? Montcrest Private School. It's up yeah. on uh, Broadview. So once I started learning about hot lime, which I'm obviously not that well versed in, but you know, I did take the. Okay, we're learning some. And hey, you know what? I've been dealing. I've been wondering why some of this mortar. You go to certain places and you go to put a chisel in it, and the chisel, like you hit it with a hammer, and it almost goes through out to the other side of the building. Like whoa, where? Whoa, hey, something wrong here. And no, it's just lack of education on my part that I don't know that, hey, that's hotline actually. And it not being as hard as what I've seen in other places is not an emergency. That's a good thing. It allows the building to breathe. It allows the moisture to go wow. in. It allows the moisture to go back out. With this concrete, when you put in Portland cement, it absorbs it and it doesn't let it, it, it still does let it breathe, but it's not, it's not, it's not nearly the same. the same. Not nearly the same. You just have to add a lot of sand for it to breathe, right? I don't even know if it's the sand that makes it that allows it to breathe. It's the lack of uh, cement. The lime, the lime is the key ingredient. Wow! And why don't we use that anymore? It's kind of like doing uh, just too long a process. Well, not even that. It's no. It's the engineers want to see it in a certain way. They want to see you know when you strap something down, you don't want to just see glue. You want to see you want to see a, a, a screw through it as well. You know they want to see both. Right, glue and screw. I get it. Okay. You know what I mean? Like they want they want to have. They want to have the best of both worlds. That would be the term over engineering. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, but you don't realize the longevity. Like with hot lime, it lasts for five, six hundred years. Wow. I'm gonna have to look up his name. Um, uh, I went to his course, but you know he he's coming around and going to cathedrals where the yeah it is five, six hundred years old, and they're wondering, hey, how do you replace this mortar? Where do we find? How do you do this? And he goes, well, if you dig a hole there and you find some sand, that's what they used. Use that sand in this. And you get a match. It's it's no joke. Yeah, yeah. They actually even the Rideau Canal. The guy came all the way over to do the Rideau Canal. 
So why are we doing it? Like, are we doing and he these? dug a hole. Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> but, I did. I mean, so they're doing this yeah. for what? They want these structures to fail, like, like after a hundred well, years. It's lack of knowledge, I think. Now that's all it is. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Even for me, like, I've, I've taken this one course. I'm not. If you want to see somebody that's really well versed in this, I'll actually check out Hunt Hunt Heritage. Yeah. I'll put. I'm gonna throw. Yeah, his Barclay, out there. right? Yeah, Barkley. Yeah, yeah. You know what? There's a guy doing really good things in the industry. Really blazing a trail there. He's actually turning it back around to. It's not just about the engineers, the architects. It's actually about the trades guys as well. But you're so right that the engineers and the architects, and I don't want to dog them. No, no, I they just that. they 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 are quick to jump and take the credit. Yeah, but what about the guys that did the work? Yeah, or, you know, you wouldn't have had that if you didn't have for years. You know, Master Wayne. Hey, I'm not making fun of the guy. No, Wayne, <laughs> you're a master at doing what you do. You want to see a guy do a patch? Call up that guy. It's incredible. He can recarve a patch. In a, and you'll walk by and never know, hey, that's just a mortar patch on a piece of stone. Wow. Yeah. The guy carved it back in and did it. And So, yeah, there's guys out there that deserve credit. These are the old school artisans. And, uh, yeah. and, and there's Barkley bringing back, you know, yeah. not lime tuck point, like original real tuck pointing. A lot of these buildings. And not only is he doing that, but he's saying, hey, you're going to take this and, and do something good with it? Hey, I'm going to, you know, I'll show you a few tricks. Let me show you. Wow, you know, that's let, so let me cool. Get you, let me get you started. This is a secret. Do we know, don't go blasting it on the internet. Here's a little bit of knowledge and help, and here, here's some couple books, and this is where we need to go. Cool. Thanks so much for just pointing me in the right direction. You yeah. know, instead of a guy going, yeah, he wants my secrets, ah, I'm going to hang up this phone. You know, that happens way too often where people don't want to share. Well, you're at the wrong place. Me and Manny share secrets all the time. <laughs> he tells me way too many secrets, man. <laughs> Are you wet certified? No, 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 you're not wet certified. No, not, not okay, certified. No, I was just I curious. There's not too many times I get into. I did do a, the fireplace last year, but that was literally just the the veneer on. I don't build. I I'm not looking to build fireplaces. Tell no, I just story. learned about wet certified maybe two three years ago. I didn't even know about it. But yeah, there's certain techniques and so share those. I, I'm not wet certified. Well, I'm it's, just, it's all about W E T E T T. Right, so that's yeah. what certified. And what they're trying to teach you is it. It is a major part. You don't want to. You don't want to poison people with the exhaust, the fumes coming Carbon, off. Carbon, yeah. yeah, coming off the fireplace. So that they, they, the fireplace box itself has to be a certain size. The flue has to be a certain size. The hearth, the, yeah. everything. It's yeah. all. Well, it's, it's a calculation. All, it's all locked in together. Yeah. I ended up going out to Nova Scotia. We were doing a couple projects out there. They hooked us up with an old mason, and mm -hmm. he told me that he had about four buddies left that mm -hmm. were still alive. And this guy was already retired, but he wasn't like, mm -hmm. he just loved building fireplaces. And he was showing me drawings of, he said, 100% efficient fireplaces. You got 120% out of that heat. Mm -hmm. So whatever you put into it, you got more the way it radiant off and the way it circulated and moved. And he was yeah. talking about smoke and he was getting into such yeah. detail about Height. fireplaces. Height I was chimney. so excited. Like yeah. he's like, if you see any black yeah. smoke outside wow. of a fireplace stone, yeah. Yeah. it's built wrong. Yeah. That's what I've, I know enough of to spot when things are not correct. And I know that, Hey, you know, something should be fixed here. But in my situation, like I am just, a re you know, hey, I hate to say it like that, but I am a repair guy of masonry. Like I said, I'm not a bricklayer. I don't build it up. But that's an art, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's hey, an art. Yeah, even tuck pointing. You know, guy, I know guys that work in the big union outfits, and they only do tuck pointing. When you look in their bag, it's all just just slickers to to point. You know what? Hey, that guy's that guy's a master at what he does. He doesn't have the whole array. I ended up finding myself in a situation where I was constantly being the deficiency guy. Which a lot of guys that I worked with were like, I hate it. I'm but going, that means you're really good. I'm going here. I'm going every day. I got to carry my tools. And every day is a new task. And I always thought, hey, this is great, man. Not only do I, I don't have to go to the big job and hang out for three. Because I did that at Union Station and a bunch of other jobs where it's just day in, day out. Yes, Same sir. thing. Yeah. Can't leave till 4.15. I would rather go and solve. Hey, oh, you got an issue? Yeah. Okay. Go. Oh, what do you need? Yep. Let's go. And go and fix all these things. Well, that's where I, that's where I found my need. You know, and it, you do have to, in any trade, you have to find your niche. And it, that takes a long time in itself, it right? So I ended up finding out that, hey, you know what? I'm really good at just being a deficiency guy. Give me your problems. Give me what you want to fix, and I'll go fix it. Bring it, it back it, to what it was supposed to be. Or what you, want, what you dreamed of it's going to be. 
you know yeah. so being wet certified you know well i don't build the fireplace but I so you don't it. but you so, but you're familiar with it you know it yeah like you have to have a certain amount of knowledge of all this stuff like caulking and, yep. and everything that goes with it right you have to understand it and it's the same with being a gc it's not about hey i can do his job and i just don't have the time to do it it's I know knowledge enough to hire that guy because he's the best at yes. it. He's going to go do me a good job. I'm going to facilitate whatever he needs and get him and, and already be on the ball with things that he might need that there's going to come up and we're going to work together and whatever it takes, he's the man, but I'm going to, I'm going to help him. So what kind of tools you got in your bag there? Oh, so I was hoping, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. No, because that was always, so this is for, this is I'm a good tip for the you young guys. That up. Okay, a good, no, a yeah. good tip for the young guys out there. It was always my thing to have, I was always the guy on the scaffold with the tools. Hey, Ian, you, hey, uh, always everybody in my bag. And that's the way to make yourself, you know, you may not be necessarily the fastest guy, the best quality guy, but he's always got the stuff, you know, and it, there's a balance there, right? You got to have the tools to do the job, but you also have to know you, how to use the tools to do the job. Yeah. Ooh, I've heard but, that way too many times. Yeah. But you don't know how to use the tools until you have the tools. And you know what? Hey, I may not even know how to use this tool, but hey, the Polish guys that I'm with, those old figures, you know, those old guys, <laughs> uh, guess what? <laughs> they're going to take my tool and they're going to go use it. And they're, oh, there it is. Bingo. <laughs> There's the pro way. Done. Got it. See ya. That's You're, how you learn. Yeah. You're setting up Europeans to learn. I love it. Yeah. That's how but you yeah, learn, So man. tools, I, I got, oh, so you're talking brands. Uh, well, not necessarily, okay, uh, but it well, can be. No, no, no. But, no, please, no, but, but I was curious about, yeah, the yeah, brands, so, so the power so tool So like brands. I said, I am just, you know, I, I you know, for personal tools, because I was at a big union outfit, so it was just all about personal tools. Don't need to own stuff. So I am just getting, uh, you know, scaffolding. Woof. There's there's fifteen thousand dollars tied up in scaffolding wow. real quick, real quick. You know things like that, right? So still building, but uh, yeah, you still have uh, you know starting to get into the bigger things now because throughout the union jo- time you have all the, you have all the hand tools and everything. That's easy. well, not really. They make you work like a caveman still, right? Oh, in the union outfits. Well, hey, I love uh, when they called you. I don't know if I can say this. This C-word. you can say whatever I, you want. Hey, you useless. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know what? If we were all Irish, man, yeah. every second word yeah. would have been well, that that's, word. That's Wait, can I say it Irish? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, but I'm I'm very curious about the stone tools, like in oh, the bag. Yeah, like, what, what are you? Because yeah, like, yeah. I mean, uh, like that's Marsh- where the that's how, where the dollar Marshalltown's are. young, right? Like, oh no, Marsh- uh, Marsh- Oh, Marshalltown. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I was thinking Trowel and Holden. But, yeah, because uh, you know Marshalltown. You're talking my trowel. Big deal. Hey, Resto don't doesn't use a trowel very often. He uses a hawk. More yeah, often, right. more often more than hocks. hey, because actually I had guys. Are you me, using the larger hawks or the smaller? I hawk? use the ten inch hawk. The ten inch. If you use the twelve inch hawk, buddy, it's too big. You're gonna blow your elbow out. Yeah, your, I know. Your, your wrist is done. <laughs> and, it's and, true. And, and I'm not joking. Mine is done. You know, Marshalltown, the rose, whatever. It doesn't much matter. But it comes down into the stone tools. That's where you. Do. I just bought a two hundred dollar hammer. And okay, maybe you carpenters, you got the five hundred dollar hammers. But I got a stiletto. Uh, yeah, know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, you're starting to get into these. These different stone tools. That's where some of the. So, which is the hammer that you have? What I, I just bought a bushing hammer, which is a, sort of like a meat cleaver kind of mm-hmm. type thing. It's yeah. for, it's it's for putting on a, a dressing on a stone. Actually, being the, sort of a little bit practicing. I got a little little something, little stone to finish up. That it, you know, gonna make. Does it that nice. chip it? No, it's um. So it's a whole bunch of teeth. Uh, literally like a meat cleaver that you would see that you would tenderize a piece of meat. It looks just like it, but it has car- uh, carbide on the, for the tips, so it stands up to getting beaten against stone. It just looks like a, a, basically like a chicken is pecked at the whole surface. You have little little pecks all over. It just makes it textured. Instead of so when you cut something with a grinder, you end up well depending on the stone. If it's a harder, dense stone, you end up with like a sheen on it. Yeah, right. You don't want that. You no, know, you don't really want to see a shiny stone, right? So how do you doctor that up? You know, you can sandblast it to get that 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 age, the patina, sort of, if you want to call it, or you can texturize it with this this type of hammer. There's many different. Okay, you're taking the the glaze off or the the way the sun, the light hits it. Yeah, 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 nice. yeah. Is it true that uh, sandblasting is illegal in Toronto now? I don't know about it. I don't know about that because I just drove down university and there was Sam Blast in the whole place. So I actually looked into it. The I only reason is I was told because of the companies weren't doing the proper cleanup well, and all that sand was going through the sewer so, system. Okay, but here's the thing. Yeah, so it's actually um, any silica work. So any grinding out of joints is now a type one abatement. Every so all tuck point. Wait, say that again one more time, please. So any silica work, anything that, you know, so uh, grinding out your joints 
any of that business. Any tuck pointing. Any well to remove the joint, to yeah. remove the mortar, you have to grind it out. So now you got to tent it. You got to tent it with air. Oh, I don't. I, or yeah. or they can get well, away with the no, respirator. But they, yeah, well, yeah, I have the full face. You know, hey, COVID. Yeah, it, it has to be a full face. Are, yeah, yeah. Well, we do have a full face. Yeah. Well, you have to protect the eyes and you got to yeah. protect the lungs. So you have to so. do it's it. It's anyway. silica, man. Yeah, but you can wear. You know, hey, companies hand out the glasses. You know, glasses half face. You're legal. Go. <sighs> Is it right? No. no. Hey, we had guys, the old Polish, that was great, man. They used to tape the duct tape <laughs> to, their, to their safety glasses. You know, there's a full face right there. Now my glasses are tuck taped to my mask. My mask. I saw a guy cutting uh, concrete today, and he brought in the old goggles that looked like on a motorcycle. And everyone was laughing at him, and I was like... Fuck, I want those. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, yeah. Yeah, so that's type of... Uh, the so thing. when did they implement that? Uh, not that long ago. I don't know the exact date, but I looked into... Uh, so I was going to do another thing where this sandblast with... Because nobody, you know, sandblasting is like... 1980s yeah it's old no but nobody does nobody I just sandblasts I, brick anymore if you do you then, damage the bricks yeah the so bricks. what you can do yas right yas is water and sand mixed together it's just like sandblasting but now the silica the dust is mixed in with the water it's in a vortex so when it hits the masonry substrate is contained it's basically. not is it but it's not going to do as much damage either because it has the water in there it's not a different version of pressure washing is it or is it uh, something else well it's, it's a twirl it's, it's a twirling both. water action. It's, it's actually you've you know, you've combined sandblasting and power washing into one right so you're still like it is still done and you still can't do it. But now I did look into doing yaws. I was, I was going to buy the whole machine and everything. But then you start, okay, I got to notify the hospital. I got to notify the police station. I got to notify the Ministry of Labor. And I just, okay. Why do you have to notify police? I'm not too sure why. They it just maybe, well, it's because of the pressurized air. Pressurized air was an issue. So it's basically a weapon. Yeah, it's a weapon. Yeah. Mm. But just so you know, any construction in the city for people that are just like, normal contractors and they don't do city work uh anything to do with sewers or gutters there's always cloth in there it's you have to legally put that in there so that yeah. anything that washes down the street it picks it picks them up and then you, you legally, lift it and then you pull legally, it out. yeah yeah but yeah, inspect want, yeah <laughs> inspectors on. are everywhere downtown. I, i've seen not, no, not kids. no they're not i've seen laborers you know hey. no goggles no respirator tuck pointing grinding I've, away i've personally cleaned a 15-story building you know acid wash like you wouldn't believe it 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 just unfortunate. Hey, it was my question. Hey guys, you know, shouldn't we worry about the off run? Uh, no, don't worry. By the time it gets mixed up with all that water and gets into the drain, it's okay. It, on the pH and, level, and, <laughs> and you only start you start work at nine, and you're done by four in the morning. So don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's the point. So Starting speaking of that, but do they? But do they? You know, the inspectors are everywhere. You know, yeah, until about friggin' seven o'clock at night. No, I, I, in city, I, they're. Yeah. Out all night, 24-7. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. You know, I support it. Hey, for stuff like that, I don't, I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. Speaking of all that safety there, it's time for... A green book talk <laughs> with Manny. No, not with me, man. Well, today, today I'm just going to open the book and just read one right out of there. What are you talking about, man? So, well, Manny has given me a beautiful layout and i cross and check my cross my t's and dot my i's but today i have not <laughs> he forgot his notes i did honestly i did and that's what happens with bad contractors <laughs> so let's see if we can get something to go towards stone nope we're not gonna get it <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's let's uh Let's let's do this one. You work with machinery all the time, sure. right? Yeah. All right. Under section 102, operator leaving the controls of a machine unattended. What yeah. is the fine on uh, first offense? I'm going to go with the 550 because the 550 seems to be popping up a lot. Nope. More. Nope. More. Uh, Come wrong. on. Tell me, tell me it's more. Tell okay, it's more. Manny. Is it? It's 250. No, uh, wrong. <laughs> and today we stumped our guest and our co-host. <laughs> it's one ninety-five. One ninety-five. <laughs> That's an odd number. But, but just think about that. If you leave it running, and for your first offense is one hundred ninety-five dollars. Mm -hmm. Like, turn your machine off and. What about guys walking underneath the mast, though? That's a big one on on these big sites. You That's know? a I, huge I one. I, I just learned out about that. That that driver gets fined too. You know. Do they really? Yeah. 
I forget what to find. The guys, were, the guys were just talking about this where, hey, you know, the, the, the driver was getting so upset. He had to get out and he actually literally put down the caution tape all the way around the machine. Everything was gotten so tired of the guys walking through yeah. back and forth. Yeah. So you never know which, uh, which direction or how you're going to get pinned, right? Common sense, man. You're on a job site. There's machinery. There's a lot of bodies. Not everybody's paying attention. There could be a hole. There could be whatever. I got my head buried in my phone. Yeah. Right? Come on. Okay. I well, can't walk let, over let, here without my, you know. Yeah. That's let's be realistic. A lot of guys that are running machines mm -hmm. they're moving fast and they're not looking at their surroundings so got, they don't know where you are you got and so there's many so many blind spots yeah like even with a backhoe if a if a bucket is mm -hmm. over top of someone's head that's a 550 dollars oh, fine yeah. the first time yeah but that's a stupidity thing right yeah. come on are you guys you know Hey, I'm so happy I, you thought it was 550 and it was 195. <laughs> hey, but that just shows you how much fear I got, right? That's why I'm up there with the tow boards. Yeah. I'm up there, every, everything, you know. So that was uh, that was Green Book talk. <laughs> Thank you, there, Carter. You know, <laughs> actually, I, I want to go back a little bit more. I wanted to find out what you did as a kid. Oh, do you find like you're, you know you're working every day and then you look back to your childhood and you're like. How the fuck did I get here? Yeah, you know what? You know what? Actually, now I have two, I have two daughters now. So, and you know, I take them, you know, before. They won't be they, listening to this no, podcast. No, no, no. But, uh, you know, I see, I see my daughters and myself sometimes where, you know, I could take my one daughter down to the beach and man, she comes home with like a bucket of rocks and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's me. I, hey, and even my backyard, you should see it. My wife hates me. Hey, I got, I got stones from a job ten years. Hey, the Whitney block, I, I got nice stones. Uh, Old City Hall, hey, I got, because that stone, that. that stone's extinct. Hey, if you need old. <laughs> <laughs> if you need old city hall stone, I got it. How much? How many? How many stone? Well, I got I'll a, take one. I got enough that it's driving my whole family five hundred kilometers from downtown Toronto. Driven them nuts. They all have stone. They have it's a lot. That is and really cool. And it's not just me. Hey, my one of my good friends is hilarious. He actually took home. I bet you it's a ton and a half of one one stone. We had to set up the whole scaffolding, double ledger, the chain fall, the whole bit. You know what's funny is that the to... city doesn't want it. The city's like, take it. Get well, it Well, actually, that here. stone came from uh, R.C. Harris. which uh, they So there is certain buildings out there that they do see, hey, you know what? We can't get this stone anymore. We are making renos. Where are we going to store this stone? So they'll keep some. They'll keep some, yeah. Mm. I got some serious questions for you, though. How do you end up getting customers when you're so... You're on projects for so long because there's so much detail and so much work. You know, they say out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to be in people's faces. Yeah. You have to do marketing. You have to, you know, you, you have to be there. Yeah. You're kind of hidden. Yeah. So yeah. how do you get that business? Well, okay. So currently I, I am like advertising. I'm spending money on advertising that whole thing about if it's not working, get rid of it. Got to get rid of it, man. It's not doing anything. For it's me. not doing anything. No, no, I've had it for a year. And what is, what are we speaking well, about? Okay. I, I've had home stars for a year. I got one. <coughs> I didn't hear yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got one job out of home stars. Totally, <laughs> totally terrible. But it's like, you know, you have to do some sort of, you have to try somehow, but you know what, how it comes about for me, for a guy that ends up finding his niche. You find your, you find your fit, you know, it's word of mouth a little bit. You know, I happen to, how I fell into business is I put up my hand at the right time. Somebody said, Hey, is there somebody in the GTA that can do this? Sure. I'll come and do it. I was thinking, Hey, I'll come. Was this on Homestars? No. no, no. Okay. No, come on. No, no and, th but, and this show was brought to you by Homestars. No, but, uh, so no, but you I know can't what? really answer your question because I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going, I, I'm working strictly on word of mouth. I, I know, but right now you're on a one year project already. Well, no, don't, don't state it like that. No, because they're all individual projects. Okay. Yeah. Now, one project rolls into another. So if you make yourself handy, hey, I can be, I can be terminated from that dream uh, today. I know, but who would want to terminate someone that can, that's well, that is only capable of doing it? There's not too many of you Well, out that's there. the other problem. And then when you, okay, somebody that can come and do it, hey, I can get, uh, I can get the, the landscaper to come in and we can build a set of stairs here. Yeah. That's, oh. their, that's their thinking? Well, no, no, I'm not saying that's their thinking, but that is, you know, for people that are looking for a guy of, of my sort, like, where do you go to get one? Where do you no, go it, to get it's a, That's what I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah, so it's word so of how, do, how do I advertise as a, I'm so small. 
really a one man band kind of type thing. I, I you know I can sub out guys. You know I, I do get guys to come and you know do different different situations, different you know deals with. Okay, I'll sub that guy or I'll hire him part time or you know all these things, right? Yeah. How do you grow it? I'm and I'm at a level like your painter friend there. I forget his name. Flo. 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 Yeah. Where so that's where I'm I'm hitting it right now. I'm totally fortunate and you know this is where I always wanted to go that I've I've found myself in. Um, sort of a, a specialty elite kind of situation where it's just they're able to flow into one job after the no, other. No, but, but but what you're saying is just like flow, he does like crazy quality work. Yeah, and yeah. And just like yourself, yeah, and, and that's people what, appreciate your work and or that's your how, ethics. That, and that's how this has happened is that it literally, hey, can you come do it? Hey, hey, guys, I started out with a stone patch. That was the first job, that the first job for this Hey, house. could somebody come and do a, this patch? Oh, yeah, I do patches like that all the time. Going to go. Okay, well, that, like, all, hey, I stretched it out as three days. When I was there, the guy, hey, while you're here, can you, uh, da, da, da? okay, we're going. To, and then while I was over there, I said, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, okay, yeah, let's make that. But, hey, whoever did this, man, this is terrible. Can I fix this, man? It was a caulking joint. That was my next thing. I kicked off a caulking, you know, and it was like, what are we talking, 25 linear feet? That, hey, can I fix that for you? And then that thing turned into me having lunch, looking at the building, it turned into, hey, you know, the guy coming by and saying, can you do a building report? Because, you know, we like so far how this is going. And, and, then, and then it, you know, passed off. Another, okay, word of mouth, passed off. And, and here's this guy calling me that, hey, can you come look at our fireplace up in, up in uh, past Muskoka there and uh, have a look? And, you know, you keep on doing quality jobs. You keep on playing the role correctly. And you're going to keep on getting passed on to, hey, here's our guy. This is our guy. I guess these clients are smart enough to know that this is not work for regular masons or regular stone masons. Well, my thing is that, it, like, you can go hire, you know, there's lots of companies you can hire to go do this. And I'm not saying that, you know, the bricklayers, you know, there's lots of people. But it's a matter of presentation, being the right fit, the, the personality, the, the quality, right person, the job, the quality of the work, paying attention to what's there, or or even what about the client? That hey, you know what? Certain situation, hey, this is what they need. They don't know they need it, but hey, and explain it all and why it fits. And hey, put the proposal in. I need that. It's so hard. Hey, I, like but I can I, see a I, lot of these masons guys, a lot of bricklayers, not wanting to do this. Well, that's why it's it, like you said. It's a twenty-five foot long caulking job. Like, why do I want to do that? Yeah, I'd rather do a I, whole wall and, and get and, paid. And and I did I did it for like pennies. I literally because I was like I was Passionate. just I was just leaving the the union world and what am I gonna do? And I was going through this whole change. Not where you know I know where I want to go. I always knew that I wanted to work for myself or be you know I always looked up to you guys and lots of others that you know hey I'd love to. But how do you do it? right and it just the passion really it comes down to but, and i always call it the love i always call it that you know i can see the guy didn't have any love for what he did here can i do it you know but you did that first job for pennies but then you did it because you knew that it was going to pay later on or another I'm job. not even it just yeah you know, it eventually will it, someone's going to pay it attention did. it did yeah in that situation like that it you know and that's all i can tell people is like, just pay attention each job can roll into another job yep. and and yep. one terrible job can can turn into a great job you no know? but you got to go through all the terrible it's crazy how it can go lessons learned yeah that's how you learn yeah and selling yourself that hey yeah, this is terrible, and yeah, it's a joke that I'm doing. You know, you know, oh, you do, you do that, and it's like, yeah, I do that, but watch, I'll do that over there next. So the guy that works with you is he an apprentice to you, or are you guys working together? He's a guy that I've known a long time back. I just happened to get a phone call. I was totally working by myself, totally working by myself, and he got he gave a phone call, just hey, haven't talked to you in a long time, you know, and we talked, and then. Uh, a couple days later, I was lining the guy up that I normally try and get for the bigger jobs, who's always falling through, and it's like, oh, I gotta try and get this guy to come in again, and then, oh, hey, you know what? This guy called me. He told me he's sitting at home, COVID, all this stuff. I'm in a perfect situation by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, nobody wants to go to work, eh? Nobody, you know, is a little bit scared of. I don't want to head to the big construction sites, right? So I'm in a situation where I would say it's just by myself. So I call him up, hey. Buddy, you know, we dreamed about it back in the day. I know we were just joking over a couple of beers, but actually this is where I'm at. Hey, are you interested? I need a hand. I really need a hand. And it's not even, you know, yeah, I want a job. 
It's, I want to come help you. And you know how many guys, and that's the thing about building the trades too. I really got to talk about that. Is it, you know, it's not necessarily about the bosses running the company. You know, you're always, yes, sir. going to, you see the guy coming, you're running to pick up the shot. Oh, I'm going to dig hard. The guy's here. No, it's not about that guy. It's about the five guys you're digging the hole with. Treat them yeah. with super respect because you know what? I always made sure that they, whatever, you know, maybe not what they needed, but you give the respect and you well, know, it's hey, family. hey, hey, the, the, the heads of the company are coming down hard on us, but you know, we're the, we're the brotherhood here. So, hey, me too. I'm in here too. And let's all take care of it. And we'll all, you know, the good with the bad. And, but now that I'm away, you know how many guys, you know how many guys that I can call up and say, hey, Lots. it's, it, I'm blown away. I'm actually, you know. When are you going to start taking the young guys and see yeah, if you hey, can find some young guys? As soon as I, <laughs> find, as soon as I find one. As soon as I find so, one. No, no, okay. honestly. What I, are you honestly, looking for? Uh, somebody that wants to show up to work. That's the number one thing. To, how do you take off that's the trades? It's funny that you got to say that, man. Wait, well, they you have to show, show up to work to, to get work. paid, right? No, yeah, but I, I had a guy lined up to come in. Yeah, I'm going to come in. Yeah, we're going to get everything ready on the Sunday. For the Monday, we're going to roll out and... Buddy, I ended up, so finally, 3 o'clock on a Sunday, never heard from this guy, 3 o'clock. Was his name Eddie? No, I call him, I go, <laughs> no, I, say, I text him, I say, what happened to you this morning? You told me to come by your house the whole bit, I come by, no answer, like, what happened to you? Oh, I just, I just slept in, man. Whoa! Ah, dude, you, this guy's older than I am, but he's still like an apprentice kind of type guy, so it's like, oh, I'm trying to literally help you out of the hole that you're in. The, just, the nerve to actually say, I just slept in. I wouldn't even went back. No, no, but that's why later it was like I do. There's times that I need a hand, and it's like you know what, I can't even pick up the the phone to call the guy because it's. So what are you looking for? Uh, next uh, to that. Okay, then. okay. So wants to wants to learn, wants to be there. Big one. Um, are you looking for someone that already has masonry background? If they came with some, that would be that would be beneficiary, but not necessarily because what I do isn't necessarily always just laying bricks there's a lot more to it there's somebody that wants to build and learn and make a career somebody you know just like myself that wanted to make a career don't know where i'm going need a hand to set me in the right direction i i would love to take a guy in to hey man you don't know that's how i was i didn't know where i was going or what i was going to do and and you know different individuals along the way unfortunately it always changed that hey gord guy came along we went down to uh you know goodman awards he helped me out and and that rolled into that was a great experience for a year or two or whatever it was and then these kids have to realize that there's a lot of money to be made in this industry and i really respected jim carrick for saying that a few podcasts ago mm -hmm. where he was saying that there is a lot of money to be made in this industry oh, it's crazy i think these kids have this mindset that they want to build the next app or they want to mm -hmm. be a part of some tech based or some new whatever something that's got nothing to do with actually building with your hands mm -hmm. and they don't realize that you can make six figures easily in this business yeah man. but manny i want to say something too it's not about just the young guys there's older guys or middle-aged guys like i'm a middle-aged guy i'm 48 even i can make money in this industry just getting into it right now but it's what you do with your money too how you save your money. Yeah, I, I had a guy come with me. He was, came to give me a hand one time. And we, we had to stay in a hotel and the whole bit just to, to facilitate this job. And, okay, we're in the middle of nowhere, man. Like, literally, the hotel was in the middle of nowhere. Nothing around. Next morning, gets in the truck, hammered. No. Hammered. And I'm like, dude, where we're going, <laughs> where we're going, like, you know, we've already been there. You've already, you know, it's not a surprise at all. I thought we were going to, you know. No, you already know where we're going, and now I got to take a hammered guy. <laughs> you know, so it's yeah, it's brutal. It's how brutal was that day? To, oh, and I cursed and swear at the guy that does. You sent me up there with the I, drunk Irish Pete. Never again. Will that <laughs> drunk Irish Pete? Get, yeah, oh yeah, the guy even had the nerve on the way out of town. Hey, can we stop at the liquor store? I want to grab a Mickey for the ride back to Toronto. Said, Whoa, buddy, serious problem, man. Yeah, oh yeah, but you know, like you know, in the. Shouldn't be working, you, man. Well, yeah, but you know what? Let's some of these older guys. You know, I can tell you stories, and you know, about guys drinking on the job and having to put up with it, like falling over, like sweating the booze out. You know? Yeah, I, I won't work with guys like that. Yeah. So that's my safety. That's my rep. You'd wonder why the company keeps on allowing them to, to go in. Right? Because they can't find any other guys well, to do and it. And then so to try and find an apprentice that wants to. Hey, do you try and go find an apprentice that wants to cut out masonry joints? Okay, I would go at home at the end of the day with an inch of stone dust, mortar, yeah. mortar dust. You know, who wants to sign up to get in that dirty? Well, hey, guess what? 20 years down the road or whatever it may be, yeah, you can make 
you know, six figures easy. You can be a GC. You can take houses apart. You can do it for yourself. It, it's highly rewarding. Highly. I where, think. Where do you want to be with your business in the next few years? With a solid uh, clientele base, I think, is my where I'm really, you know, I'm trying to grow that. And that's where I'm currently at. I'm not really, my goal isn't to grow in employees. I know that's everybody's goal is to be this big company with many employees and that's where you make a lot of money but you my, don't my, mine's more in passion more in passion i think that uh, you'll be noticed more because everybody wants to be like a bricklayer and i laid 800 bricks a day but you didn't pay attention to those 50 terrible bricks that you laid today <laughs> you know? or dirty or, uh, bricks or whatever you know but that's where yeah. i'm at is that i'm not about quantity i'm about quality and looking after and and, and so just to try and I'm happy to work by myself, not by myself, but to, to remain a smaller company, that's okay. And to teach people and to, to, to really grow masonry. Yeah. So for the listeners listening right now, what do you want to be known for? What kind of and work? And for the listeners that are not listening right now, yeah. there's only well, one set of listeners. <laughs> honestly, believe it or not, believe it or not, there are people listening to this podcast right now that time. aren't part of listening to it. Yeah. Just- <laughs> like, I got buddies that listen to it with their whole crew. Yeah. They, they call me and like, I play this for my guys all the time. I'm trying to give them hints. Yeah. 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 And they'll play yeah. it for 20 guys or 10 guys or three guys. Sure. They'll tell me yeah. all the time, not everyone's paying attention, but subconsciously, they will hear this. So everybody consciously is <laughs> listening. Yeah. That's yeah. not listening. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, uh, for people to get so that, what do you want to be known for? Well, the quality of work comes to mind. That's always the thought. No, but what but, kind of work? I mean. Oh, what kind of work? Historical buildings. That's okay. really is You love jam. the idea of actually walking around I walk the around city. The, I do. And and you had a hand in working on that I could, building. Well, I could take you guys on a tour of maybe hundreds of buildings that, you know, I can name them all off. You know, I worked on Castle Loma. I worked on City Hall, you know, Union Station. You know, okay, those are not with my company, but that's, you know. But you were part around, of that process. Yeah, and that, your, your work is up there. Hey, you know, and I also like the stories that you build. You yep. build these stories with these guys. Hey, you remember that? You remember how hard that day was? You remember what we did there and it was terrible. And then we went back to my place and had a beer. And, you know, it's, you know, it's those stories and those camaraderie that you've you know, you, you talk about the inch of brick dust and stone dust. All the way. I, I remember those days, those earlier days. And then I also remember when you go home and you just shower mm-hmm. and you just, it's like it's a red. murder scene. Yeah, it's, it's red. It's just yeah. it's all falling down the yeah. drain, yeah. right? Those days are no more because of the what we were talking about. Of course, about. of but course. Yeah, it's yeah. completely different now. Yeah. But there yeah. was a sense of satisfaction oh. from those days because yeah. you were dirty. And I still remember like walking into certain places if you had lunch or you're walking around in a regular neighborhood. And if you were in the downtown core, you were walking beside guys that were in $1,000 suits or whatever. And you're like going... I actually think my job's more important than your job. Well, my, my job's definitely funner. Yeah. We definitely have way more fun. Yeah. Way more fun. Uh, and everything you learn and you see and you, and, you know, you learn about the history of taking things apart. I love it. That I love. Or how about yeah. all the little secrets in all these locations? Yeah, there's there can be that too. And right? the stories, right? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Totally right. You start uncovering. Hey, like or like on my Instagram there, you know, pulling out that thing about um, uh, pneumonia. Hey, my yeah. daughter had pneumonia that time. Yeah. Right? You know, just you pull out that whole write up about. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Things that you can take hands. You know, like I can go work on Parliament Hill, or the guys are doing uh, Providence House out in uh, uh, PEI right now. I know there's these things that, you know, and the guys come from not only all around the country to do that job. They come from all around the world. World. They really do. That's the other thing for the young guys here. They don't realize that if you do get into historical restoration, you'll be in demand, man. You like really they'll are. they'll cover your per diem. They'll travel you. Oh, they'll yeah. take care of you. Yeah. And you actually go to work and, and spend your days. And then yeah. you'll discover another city and you'll talk to people in another country. No, well, I was just going to say, yeah, one of the main things that I learned at school was actually like quality of work. Doesn't matter about speed. Speed, never going to matter. You do quality of work and they'll come for you. Yeah. Right? Somebody so will come, good to hear, man. Somebody will come knock on your door. Hey. I saw even on my, okay, here's a good example. On my Instagram is, is a wall I did and I was getting yelled at and, you know, made to feel terrible to, because, Hey, you know, you were told to do it however you want, but they didn't really mean take friggin' four weeks to build that, you know? And I go, well, but yeah, but this is awesome. Like, look <laughs> at this. And, and, you know, and they kept on getting just, just, you know, 
change the pattern and go. And I thought, no way, no way, I'm not doing it. And the reason why I wasn't going to do it is because I wanted the picture of the quality work. Right? It's important. I don't care that you yelled at me that it took too long. And I even tell the client now, yeah, I know you guys want it faster, faster. But in the end, when I walk away and it's a year down the road, you're going to look at that and go, hey, that looks hot. At versus, oh, he was a week, he, he was a week under schedule. You'll always forget that. Yeah, You'll always 100%. Remember that but you're going to remember, you're going to see the, you know, what he did. What is your handle again? Gale Force Masonry. At Gale Force At Gale Masonry. Force. Yeah. And then it's www.galeforcemasonry.com. We can keep on talking. Well, no, but dude. let's. Well, let's, we got to wrap it up. No, though. You're, you're totally right. I'm just I, saying, but we got. We like, just got to know you, and I really want to talk about heritage. So, if you have an old home, if it's older than 80 years old, it, it could be younger. But if, if it's, it's older just, than if you've 80 got a years home old, that needs restoration, you only focus on exterior. No, not true. I've been no? called in to. I've cleaned uh, clients' homes. I've cleaned, you know, like I, I cleaned the tavertine floor. It was actually this was also incredible too. She, you know, they cleaned, you know, the the house staff or whatever clean the house all the time always wash the floor well i went in there with a the cleaner and cleaned the stone floor and you it might it was as black as black when i was cleaning it it's, it went in and we cleaned all the stone the whole the whole top floor it was a massive what was the house staff using mr clean well it was something like that yeah but you don't realize how much <laughs> how much residue gets left behind and then the dirt tracks into the residue and you never get it off and you can't get it out oh because you etched it now and now well, yeah you yeah. didn't seal it afterwards right that, that's a little trade secret, man. Oh, uh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Leave no, it to him. And if you're a young guy, old guy, or you want to work in this industry, then give Ian a call, man. Yeah. What else do you like? I, I feel like there's more to like fireplaces or like interior stones and so yeah, much more I, to talk well, about. Well, there's man. all kinds of stuff. Hanging stones on the wall. You know, we've we've done uh, interior rooms, all stone. It's like solid four inch thick no, or veneer? No, you do a veneer. A veneer. It's, you know, that, uh, inch and a half or something like that. Where are you getting the veneer? Actually, we didn't even talk about that. Like, where is your favorite place to get stone from? Uh, you know what? I like that Muskoka stone a lot. I do. Yeah. But uh, as long as it's not Tavertine, stay away from Tavertine. Tavertine well, doesn't and make why? any sense. Uh, why do we stay away from sponge. Tavertine? Well, yeah, it is a sponge, but it's actually like, it's like the sidewalk chalk it's so soft yeah. it breaks apart in my opinion it's not even that it's terrible looking i can't even say it's not that nice no it's terrible it's terrible <laughs> no but there is you know I'm there's, there's an endless it. amounts of different types of stone out there to play with you can we can build all kinds of i have a stone table my wife hates me i got stone table i got stone everything in my house <laughs> you know you but sure it, you're not portuguese yeah yeah right yeah. <laughs> what nationality are you my background scottish yeah Okay. But uh, yeah, wait. Because a lot of your friends are Irish. Wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah, I married a, a girl that's uh, pretty high up in the Irish uh, business there. Yeah. So. I went to Scotland with an Irish family. And uh, that was interesting because the whole way they talked about how they're not supposed to get along, but they totally got along. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a great trip. <laughs> That would be all right. Yeah. This has been fascinating. Really appreciate you coming in, man. Well, and I know you were a little right. hesitant at the beginning there, and yeah, it's, you know, yeah, like not not sure what I can, <laughs> you know, yeah. contribute is all I worry about. But yeah, no, man, yeah. there's more than enough to share here, and hopefully, some someone's listening, and and they're gonna like maybe give you a holler or whatever. But can I ask one, just one well, thing? Of course. I just want you to sing the song that you're originally gonna oh, sing. Oh, I was gonna do Twinkle Twinkle. That's just all, do it. Just do it for twinkle, me. Twinkle Twinkle. <laughs> Star, how I wonder where you are. That's for my daughters. I sing it every night for my daughters. So I, 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 I had to, man, because it came up song. two or yeah. three times, and it I was did. like, "He wanted to do it. We have well, to let my, him my do other, it." My other daughter likes the roly poly, but we'll save that for the next uh, next podcast. Yeah, so let, let's do this again. Let's hook up and talk more about the heritage homes. I think there's a lot of people that want to get. Uh, how, how to deal with heritage, uh, how to get the permits, how mm -hmm. to, you know, the, the process. There's a huge process there. Definitely. definitely Especially with the permits, right? I've already been in touch with Barclay, right? So he's, yeah, he's planning on coming in in about nice. four weeks, right? Nice. Have you ever met him or you just Oh, I do know him. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Barclay's awesome. Barclay's helped me out. Let me tell you, that guy is one of the guys that's really helped me. Gone out of his way. He yeah. Another guy that's gone out of his way to give me a hand. I've spoken to him on the, on the phone a couple of times, mm -hmm. right? So we had great conversations. And I was he's doing like, great I was, things. I was fascinated by some of the stuff that he's been doing thanks guys thank appreciate you it. and really appreciate it man that was gale force masonry and we got to get out of here another great podcast and please give him a shout contact him you got any questions are you gonna work for him thank you Ian. get it out of here six to baby yeah
construction life. <laughs>